Today's topic is what are the eligibility requirements for a CR1 spouse visa in 2019? Before walking down the aisle and marrying your foreign partner, you had better review the requirements that you must satisfy so that your new spouse will be able to join you for a life together in the USA. If you don't meet the requirements, you do not want to find out after the honeymoon. I am Fred Wall, the Visa Coach, and I help you get through a confusing and frustrating immigration process so that you can have a happy life together in the USA with your foreign partner. Now, let's talk about eligibility requirements for a CR1 spouse visa in 2019. Now, I am going to list point by point what the requirements are. Number one, the couple is lawfully married. Okay. That means that wherever they had their ceremony, they are lawfully and officially married and have the paperwork to prove it. Number two, the couple's relationship is bona fide. This means the couple has a sincere relationship between them. It does not have to be a, oh, a hallmark greeting card romantic relationship, but it must be sincere that the couple truly want to spend their lives together, that they are not shamming, they are not undergoing this process only for immigration purposes. Number three, the couple's engagement leading to marriage and their arrangements after the wedding, well, matches the cultural norms from the spouse's home country. This is a similar requirement to being bona fide in that the couple acts bona fide as well by following the cultural norms from the foreign spouse's home country. What that means is that if, for example, in the country and culture of the foreign spouse, an engagement celebration was expected, or a ring was expected, or a dowry was expected, or full involvement of either family was or is expected, well, then the couple should do what is expected. Number four, the sponsor is a U.S. citizen or lawful permanent resident. That's straightforward. Number five, the sponsor's income is over 125% of his state's poverty level. And in 2019, this means, well, $21,138 annual income for the sponsor and his foreign spouse, plus $5,525 for any additional household members. And usually this means, well, dependent children. Now, cash assets or home equity can substitute for income. Number six, the sponsor cannot have been convicted of certain crimes. If previously convicted of domestic abuse, sexual abuse, child abuse, well, depending upon the circumstances of these past convictions, the sponsor might be found ineligible for the visa. Number seven, the foreign spouse has a passport. The foreign spouse possesses a passport permitting him or her to travel across international borders. And the foreign spouse visa, the, the, the spouse visa for the foreign spouse, will be stamped into this passport. And the visa is usually good for six months. So the passport itself must have at least eight more months of validity. Number eight, the foreign spouse passes a medical exam. Now the foreign spouse must show she has the, he or she has the required vaccinations, does not carry any diseases that would cause a public health risk, and does not have any dangerous physical or mental disorder, and does not have a medical condition that would require, say, public financial assistance to treat. Number nine, the foreign spouse has not, well, seriously, violated U.S. immigration laws such as overstaying previous visas to USA, deportation, misrepresentation, and fraud to U.S. immigration, well, might prevent approval of the foreign spouse visa. Number 10, the foreign spouse is of good moral character. This is kind of a catch-all. It was designed to prevent criminals and sex trade workers from being eligible. 
But sometimes the counselor officer can also apply this rule to other situations. For example, if the courtship between the foreign, fans, foreign spouse and American sponsor took place well before divorces to prior spouses were final, the counselor officer could consider the relationship at that time to have been adulterous and, well, deny on moral grounds. This is pretty rare, but is possible. Number 11, the couple intends to live in the USA. Now, when granted, the spouse visa includes approval of permanent residency for the foreign spouse. Now, immigration will only issue the spouse visa if convinced that the couple, the couple, both of them, sincerely intends to live in the USA. So, in the case of a couple who already lives outside, together outside the USA, say as expats, who live and work in a foreign country and maybe just want to have the flexibility to occasionally visit the USA, well, they are really not eligible for this visa. What they really want for this purpose is a B1, B2 visitor visa. This was Fred Wall, the visa coach. Now, please like or add your comments to this video. And then go to visacoach.com and sign up for the Visa Coach monthly newsletter. Each month it is full of tips and advice on marriage-based immigration. And it is free of charge. And when you sign up, you'll get two free ebooks I have written, 121, 120 K-1 Visa interview practice questions, and five things you must know before starting on your visa. Finally, when you are ready to get started, call for your complimentary case evaluation and speak with me directly. If you are considering hiring Visa Coach to personally guide you through your immigration adventure, join him for a complimentary case evaluation. He listens to you to learn the red flags and strengths of your case, your eligibility and goals. He suggests which visa is right for you, the best strategy to get it, and how soon your partner can join you. To learn more about Visa Coach's services and how he can help you, book your free case evaluation today.